Is this like pretty, can you tell us how big this tree is? All right, so today I'm here with Phil Collins. Uh, Phil and Collins and I have been working together for uh, several years now. About Let, six years now. Holy cow, si six years. I, time has just flown. So he was one of our very first agents that started using us. And he always gives us opinions on how to improve and then we implement it into our business. Uh, and one of the things that brought, was brought up in our last team meeting was about, you never want to tell someone not to buy a house as a home inspector because you don't know where, really where they came from. And our job is to present the facts and it meets their tolerances. So today, what, what type of buyer do we have today? This is a first time home buyer. Okay. Yeah. I've known him for many, many years. He's rented all over the city. Uh, has watched enough HD TV that has decided <laughs> he wants to buy a house. And, uh, and so we're managing expectations with realizations of cost. And uh, for most first time home buyers in about the 220, 230 or less price range. And so. Okay. so I like how you brought up, you know, he watches HD TV. And what I like to always say is, you know, there's this HD TV effect that's happening with a lot of first time home buyers. They think they can buy anything and fix anything at a pretty reasonable cost because they always show you all these really cheap prices on HDTV. It and, all can be done in 30 minutes. All 30 yeah. minutes <laughs> and they make all kinds of money yes. uh, because they renovated this property. But today's market, the way it's working is that labor is really high and the profit margins are real low on uh, house flips. So we're gonna go back to the main topic was, you know, so you got a first time home buyer, we're gonna manage expectations. So as a home inspector, you still never tell them not to buy a property, but you give them all the facts. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna to try to find all the major issues for them. We'll present the issues to them, and then you leave it to them to determine if those facts fit their tolerances. Yeah, that's exactly right. Right, so uh, that it's a kind of a, it's a very gray area that's hard to operate, like kind of operating muddy waters in a way, but you still have to make sure that you just make sure they understand all the facts yeah. when it comes to as long as they are allowed to make the decision of what they're buying. Right. Yeah, so. Everybody knows everything's open, everything's visible, everything's right. clear, transparent. Yep. Yeah. You know, let everybody, let the cards land where they fall. You know, yep. maybe this isn't the house. Maybe you needed to see that thing right. so that you can make a decision on a better house. Right. So that also leads into the next point that we wanted to make was, is, you know, you can lose the deal but don't lose the client. Right. So keep your client close, right. you know, keep your inspectors close, understand that that house didn't meet their tolerances right. and go find the next one, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's or, yeah, it's a career. We're in it for the long game. Yeah. If you're in it for the long game, you're gonna be in business forever, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 All right, so this is Phil Collins. If you need any real estate needs, make sure that you give him a call. He always fights for his clients. I see it every single time uh, that we're in a deal uh, transaction with him. All right, so this is a 1970s home. Let's go see what we're gonna find. Let's go check it out. Okay, so we're gonna start on the roof with this one. Uh, with the first time home buyer, you always wanna focus on the big ticket items. Uh, you know, all the little, a lot of the first time home buyers, they get caught up with like the scratches or the, uh, the small cracks or the paint color, but you wanna really try to bring in that big picture of what's important. Anywhere where water's intruding is really important. Uh, and uh, HVAC equipment, their water heater, el electrical wiring, and plumbing. You know, those are your big ticket items. So uh, let's start on the roof and uh, let's go see what I'm gonna go find. Full A action training day. <laughs> Even marketing people get on roofs here. I know. <laughs> All right, after jumping around on the roof a little bit, we didn't want to really film up there. It wasn't too safe. Uh, but one of the things that we noticed was is uh, there was a lot of roof maintenance that needed to happen. We needed to seal around a lot of the uh, flues. Some of the lead jacks weren't installed properly, but our biggest issue was the lack of kickout flashing. This kickout flashing is allowing water to get behind the walls and the siding in some areas. So this is where an area's water intrusion intrusions happen and something that you would need to take care of pretty much right away, negotiations or as you move into the property. All right, let's uh, move on to the HVAC equipment. Okay, moving on to the HVAC equipment. Um, again, this isn't something you really have to be a rocket scientist to, to see. You can see right here just by looking at this equipment, it's old. 
uh, we'll be able to determine if it's performing or not. But even if it is performing today, we still want to be aware that if this thing is older, we can read the data plate and figure out how old it is. But you're going to need to budget to replace this or at least keep your home warranty in place. Home warranties, home warranties aren't always like super reliable, but at least you have some buffer area while you regain that money after you spend all the money getting into the house. All right, uh, let's go on to the next item. We're gonna walk around, maybe look at the structure and kind of keep an idea of if there's any movement on this property too as well. All right, some basic steps to determine if the HVAC is performing or not. These are just real, real amateur steps, but all you do is just you put your hand over the condensing fan and if it's blowing out pretty warm air and the uh, refrigeration line is condensating and it's cold, that's a good step to understand that your HVAC is performing uh, today and uh, uh, you might have less problems. But again, that unit was super old. It's, if I had to guess, it's early 90s or really late 80s. So we're looking at probably replacing this one in the near, near future. All right, so the next step, what I recommend doing is you kind of want to walk around the exterior of the structure. I always try to suggest this before you fully commit to the inside, just do a general walk around. Again, you don't need to be like a crazy huge engineer to find these issues to determine if the property's moving or not. So right here, you can see the wall is actually slanting away and it's probably due to this tree right here and maybe the droughts that happened over the years and the wall is failing right here. So we know that we're gonna need a structural engineer or a foundation company to come and re repair this wall. So this is something that before you even put in the offer, you could have found and maybe getting the idea that it's something that you're going to want to accept to negotiate on or fix in the future. All right, so one of the biggest questions that we get asked all the time is, is this tree causing my structure to move or will it cause my structure to move? Well, that's going to be circumstantial. You, as a home inspector, we can't predict the future. But one of the things that you wanna be aware of, if you have a big tree like this, the last thing you wanna do is cut it down. Because right here, we have a big tree, the canopy shoots way over the house. And if you cut this down, what happens? You're going to cause these roots to die and create voids in the soil underneath your house. And that will cause some movement to your structure. So how do you maintain something like this? Well. You wanna make sure during like times of drought or uh, just general watering the foundation so the roots don't have to extend any further to try to grab that moisture. So you wanna actually create a watering program to keep this tree healthy and alive to help better protect your, your house. Uh, when it comes to causing movement, one thing you wanna realize this home's built in the 70s. This, home, this tree is really old, the house is really old, and you can see on this side of the structure, it's actually caused no movement at all. So trees don't always cause issues, but it is something that you wanna maintain uh, by adding a water program to help, better, to help them prevent from damaging your structure. Okay, the uh, next area that we have on the exterior is I ta always talk about water penetration and easy areas for water to get into. This vinyl siding isn't the best installed. We have some a lot of areas where the Z flashing isn't installed. Z flashing, I mean kick out flashing, sorry, kick out flashing and water's getting behind it and even lack of flashing and sealing sealant around this deck. So you can see right here, we're an easy area for waters to get in. And you can just follow, start up high, see where the water can get in, and then always travel down to the bottom. And you can see where the rod is happening. So you, if you see rod at the bottom, the only thing you can do to assume is that th this whole side right here is rotted behind. So we have some water, major water penetration in here and an easy area for who knows how expensive this can be until you start pulling back this vinyl siding to see how bad it is. So that's actually a really good find for your home inspector to spot something like this out. All right, um, let's go inside to see if we find one more item and then maybe close this video. Okay, quick pause guys. If you like this type of videos, please hit that bell and the subscribe button. And if you have any questions about homes or home inspection questions at all, please leave a comment below so we know what videos to make next. And plus, Isis is going to make money off this YouTube channel, and she's only, what, 300 subscribers away? 300-ish? All right. <laughs> so uh, if you don't subscribe for me, subscribe for Isis. All right, let's go see what I'm going to go find next. Okay, so the one of the last items we found on this property is it's a pretty easy... What we like to get into are these ha access hatches. You have to just remove a few screws. Technically, it 
is kind of iffy when it falls into the intrusive method, but we just make sure we don't damage the property and we put it back. So if we can open this without damaging the property, this is the best place to find like water leaks, termites, or anything, or if your whole bathtub is leaking underneath your slab. So we like to take these off and run some loads of water. One of the areas is we know that they've had an issue with this area in the past because we have copper uh, water lines and the house is built with galvanized. So we have copper and galvanized. Copper a, is a good solution. I mean, copper is great, but we have to make sure it's tied to the galvanized properly. And then also he has galvanized in this property. So galvanized is an older type water line system. It's built in the 70s and 80s. And, or built in, the, we installed it in the 70s and 80s thinking it was the perfect solution, but then our hard water started eating out from the inside out. So it can cause issues down the line. Right now we have good water pressure everywhere and we don't, we haven't found any pinholes in the water lines, but you still educate the home buyer to understand what happens to galvanize water lines in this area. And so they make a better informed decision or understand down the line that they can uh, break. So. I'll end right there. Uh, so that's some really good finds with Chris with Day Action. If you like these types of videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and please leave comments on any home inspection questions or topics you'd like us to hit. All right, catch you on the next one.